Yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's really a great pleasure for me to see all of you again here in Riga, in the hometown of, uh, of Zabbix. And yeah, so we spent like a few years in a kind of in a virtual work communicating over Zoom, Skype, and all this uh, modern technology. But finally, well, we can see each other in person. I'm so, so happy, so happy about it. So yeah, so this year it's a 10th Zabbix Summit already. And again, I'd like to thank everyone our community members and users uh, and the customers and the partners and the sponsors of this conference. So thank you, thank you very much for your trust and uh, uh, for use of uh, Zabbix. So thank you. Um, what else? Uh, today we also have a special, uh, special, sp special event and this day is special because we are also celebrating the 10th anniversary of Zabbix Japan. So this is our first subsidiary. Uh, we opened in Japan 10 years, exactly the 10 years ago. So I'd like to thank the whole Zabbix team for the effort uh, and for the hard work uh, supporting Zabbix uh, users and Zabbix customers, Zabbix partners in Japan and special thanks to Mr. Uh, Kodai Terashima-san for his effort and his team. Well. Uh, today, I would like to start my talk with some challenges and uh, in a modern IT world. And of course, there are so many different challenges. And uh, from maybe from a kind of a CIO point of view, there are, there are a number of them. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the many companies right now in the process of a digital transformation. So basically moving from older technologies and older approaches to a newer one. Sometimes we really are kind of a mix. We have many of, in, in our companies, even in Zabbix, we have a mix of older technologies and newer technologies. And so we have to think how to, how to manage it, how to, how to be prepared, how to be prepared for the future. Of course, it's all, it's all related to, to a monitoring as well. And of course, again, so many companies are trying to move uh, to, to, maybe to technologies like uh, well, hybrid cloud, to a public cloud, AWS, Azure, and, but still, still in, in most, the, most of the cases, it's just a combination of the older world and the newer world. So we need to make sure that the strategies we are using in our company, they, they, they fit they fits, uh, well the future. So, and speaking about the IT infrastructure management, so older approaches doesn't work anymore. Yeah, so we really want to deliver uh, a value to our customers in a much, much faster way. So that's why the new approaches like, well, DevOps, uh, AIOps, uh, the much faster uh, continuous, uh, continuous delivery of the smaller, maybe some smaller improvements, but faster to, to end user is, uh, is a super, super important. And of course, uh, we need to be we need to be ready for the for the, for the future for the things uh, for the for the artif uh, artificial intelligence uh, for other new modern technologies which are on our horizon. And last but not least, uh, the the cybersecurity plays an increasingly increasingly important role. Yeah, there are many cases. Yeah, some different vulnerabilities found in a different software. And we have to be absolutely, uh, I I the, the cybersecurity needs to be uh, one of the top of uh, uh, our priorities. So, uh, okay, you may ask, uh, how does it affect monitoring? And does it affect monitoring in, in any way? And I have to say it, yes, of course, yeah. So we use maybe a different approaches in IT infrastructure. So that needs to be somehow uh, managed also by by monitoring tools, tools we use. And there are a number of challenges. Of course, the, the, maybe the most kind of significant one is so-called uh, the multiple uh, tools so, uh, problem is when we, uh, when we use multiple tools, monitoring tools from a different vendors. And, and when some companies approach us, they want to, to standardize on the, on the monitoring approach, we see that we see that they already use maybe, well, dozens of different monitoring solutions from a different vendors. And it's really becomes a, a huge, becomes a huge, huge problem. Yeah, it's really, it's really hard to manage all those solutions. There is no a single standard or how we approach monitoring, how we approach observability in our, in our enterprises. So the, the main problem, I think, is the lack of kind of a centralized um, 
uh, centralized management of the monitoring and, and again the lack of uh, lack of the standard the lack of kind of a single pane of glass so we can see everything what is happening what is happening in our enterprises and of course uh, uh, scalability high availability it plays an increasingly important role with a growing number of devices with the complexity so it's not longer kind of maybe kind of flat IT infrastructure, something like that. So again, it's a combination of, uh, uh, of systems running in the cloud, in a hybrid cloud, something in Kubernetes and VMware clusters. Yeah, so we need to find some uh, common ground. Uh, uh, so how, how, how we all manage it. And of course, uh, things like uh, proactive problem resolutions becomes critical. So we are not longer we, we, we don't really, we are not happy anymore with kind of a reactive approach to, to a problem, uh, problem resolution. When problem happens, we discover, okay, we've got a problem, let's fix it. Yeah, so it, it doesn't work anymore. So what we want to do, we want to discover problems even before they happened. Using, using, uh, using uh, the machine learning, using baseline monitoring, anomaly detection, all other, all, all other techniques. So, uh, and cost and cost effectiveness. Okay, that's that's a very very important topic, especially from a CIO point of view. We need to make sure that our solution scales not only technically on a technical level, but also well, it fits our budget. And it, again, uh, our budget is is under control. All right. So, and that's exactly why we do Zabbix. So, what is Zabbix? Zabbix is a universal, free, and open source enterprise-ready monitoring solution. Again, from a day one, uh, we, uh, in, uh, well, in, two, in 2001, when Zabbix was released for the first time, it was released under a, a GPL v2 license. So this exactly the same license, or free and open source license, is used by uh, different products, for example, by Linux. And uh, Linux is a super popular, a super kind of flexible and uh, universal operating system. It's been used for high performance computing, workstations, uh, servers, and embedded environment. And actually, uh, like, uh, likewise, uh, Linux Zabbix is also a very universal in its space, in the monitoring space. So again, it could be used for a vast majority of different uh, use cases. Regardless of what kind of a company you are, in what industry you're working, what you're interested in, uh, I don't know, availability monitoring, performance monitoring, uh, well, visualization, alerting, maybe the, uh, anything else. So Zabbix, Zabbix, can, Zabbix can deliver it. And Zabbix is a, well, enterprise. We, we've, we, we've been focused uh, on the enterprise users, but not only. What we, what we really want, we really want that Zabbix fits very well enterprise environments. That's why we have uh, created uh, so many integrations with existing enterprise, enterprise tools you already have, like CMDB systems, ticketing system, and any, any other systems, and as, other systems you, you may already have. Again, and Zabbix is an all-in-one monitoring solution. And again, this is kind of a Zabbix DNA. We are trying to build an one solution with, with all monitoring-related functionality built in. So you don't need to uh, build your monitoring platform out of different components. Zabbix should fit it all. Of course, maybe not 100%, but at least 80%, 90% of all monitoring tools, uh, monitoring needs, uh, should be covered by Zabbix. Things like alerting, visualization, early problem detection, uh, the data collection, so it's all, or, or discovery, it's all, it's all part of uh, Zabbix. So again, uh, speaking about the cost of Zabbix, uh, it's, uh, Zabbix provides really extremely low uh, total cost of ownership. Of course, thanks to the fact that Zabbix is a free and open source, all right, so you may use it for free, uh, but, but uh, again, you, you, when you use the professional services from Zabbix, yeah, the professional services are fixed, uh, fixed price. So you don't, you don't need to pay, well, per device. There is no per device fee. You pay a fixed price, and regardless of number of uh, devices you have, uh, the, price, the price is exactly the same. But it's not only because of this, it's because of uh, the all information about Zabbix is publicly available. So Zabbix documentation, yeah. Uh, our roadmap, 
uh, or ticketing systems, there's a feature request, and we are, we are trying to be extremely transparent with our users and customers and partners uh, what we are doing, what we are doing in Zabbix. And yeah, so you and you absolutely cover it. So basically, Zabbix provides you, gives you a best of both worlds, a free and open source, yeah, and all the attributes are free and open source software are there. It, it gives you so much freedom, no restrictions at all. On a technical level, on a business level, no restrictions. So uh, uh, tons of advantages coming from the fact that Zabbix is free and open source, and many, many advantages that Zabbix is covered by a vendor, by Zabbix, and by a network of uh, our partners. So you're ab you, you may be absolutely confident in Zabbix in, in the services we, we provide. And we, we, we do have a number of, uh, well, the different types of commercial services and professional services which provide to users. Uh, professional services for different levels, uh, for smaller companies, for, for bigger companies with a different SLA. And I'll give you an example. Just a few years ago, we have introduced a Global One support for the most demanding bigger companies having a different legal entities in a different countries, like multinational companies. I'm very excited to say that the number of those enterprise, the bigger enterprise uh, companies is growing, is growing over the years. Uh, and the training, so training is, training is super, super important. So sometimes uh, I hear this question, hey, I've been using Zabbix since uh, Zabbix 1.0. I know everything about Zabbix. Why would I need a training? But, well, believe me, <laughs> you will learn so much when you, when you go to a, a training session, like Zabbix uh, certified uh, specialist or Zabbix certified professional, because we cover e everything, actually, all single aspect of Zabbix. So you'll know how to make high availability, how to scale Zabbix, how to... Uh, uh, build the best uh, monitoring architecture in your enterprise, and we cover absolutely 100% of all uh, functionality which is provided by Zabbix. So your specific use case will, will, will is, co is covered by the by the training. What else? Uh, yeah, and just uh, recently, again, a few years ago, we have introduced uh, so, so one-day courses. And if you'd like to get some in-depth understanding of some specific topics, like, uh, for example, how to work with the API, if you want to do some integration with Zabbix with some other, with some other tools, or how to do anomaly detection with Zabbix, or maybe some other topics, it's all covered in one-day uh, courses, which are available, well, which are available online. So I really, I'd like to encourage you to, to have a look at what kind of trainings we are providing, and it's, it really gives so much, so much value. It really, sa actually, our services are designed to save your time and money, yeah? Of course, you may figure out by yourself how to do certain things, but uh, trainings will, will help you tremendously. And uh, the services, they are not provided only by us, by Zabbix, by the vendor, by also by the great network of our partners. And at this moment, we have more than 200, almost, sorry, almost 250 partners all around the world. Yeah, so, well, everywhere. North, South America, Western, Eastern Europe, Australia, Africa, well, you name it. Yeah, so... That's uh, the, the services are provided by us or, or by our partners. And of course, the partners, they have a huge advantage of being closer to a customer, to you. They also have advantage of maybe of knowing your specific industry. They speak your native language. So yeah, you have a choice. You may work directly with us or with your partner, which may be very, very close to you. Um, so, Sometimes, again, I'm, I'm getting this question, so how many users you have? Yeah, and uh, honestly, I absolutely have no idea. Yeah, I, I'm repeating this over and over again. We, we don't track our users. We, we actually have no idea how many users we, we have uh, all around the world. Uh, I, I have some numbers, like, for example, number of unique uh, IP addresses uh, of our, which accessed uh, uh, our repository, I think it's more than 20 million um, last year or this year. I, I just need to, to, to verify. But what we know, we know a number of our uh, customers. 
And I have to say that at this moment, more than 100 of uh, Fortune, uh, 500 global companies, they uh, use Zabbix, they, they are our customers. Yeah. So this is, I think, a, a great achievement, and this, the largest world's companies, they trust and trust our solution. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, speaking about Zabbix scalability, what are kind of the capabilities in terms of scaling of a single Zabbix server? And here also we have some impressive cases when, for, when, for example, one of the, com uh, the company, the, the, one of the largest company in, in, in the area from the United States, it used, it, it used uh, a single Zabbix server to monitor more than, uh, f uh, well, more than uh, half a million of devices. So those are physical devices distributed across, across the United States. So and, uh, obviously the number of items and triggers is much, much higher. Uh, we have also a number of cases when uh, a single Zabbix server handles more than 10,000, 20,000, and 30,000 of, uh, of proxies. So I'm talking about single Zabbix server with this number of uh, proxies, again, all distributed across the country. So this specific case is more than 30,000 of proxy is a, is, is, a, is a real case from all the countries in Latin America when the schools, the public schools, all monitored by by Zabbix. So actually, one proxy per each school, one proxy monitors the local environment, and it all gets reported to a single, to a kind of centralized, uh, central uh, Zabbix um, uh, server. And in terms of uh, number of items and number of triggers, so we, it's, it's no longer a kind of a special case when, when there are setups with more than a tens of millions of uh, uh, items and triggers uh, handled by by single Zabbix server. Of course, it requires quite a beefy hardware. Yeah, of, uh, obviously. Yeah, the database uh, the database needs to be uh, tuned to handle this number of requests and the Zabbix server side and the front end. But still, those are the numbers which are achievable using Zab a single Zabbix server. What else? Well, Zabbix can be deployed anywhere. And that is what, what, what we do with Zabbix. We are kind of, kind of uh, trying to extend the level of freedom we give to our users. Zabbix is free and open source, but also Zabbix can be deployed in any way you want. And obviously we do provide uh, official packages for basically vast majority of the most popular Linux distributions like uh, uh, RHEL or uh, SUSE Enterprise, if you prefer to go this uh, kind of a commercial enterprise way, or uh, uh, Alma Linux, uh, Rocky Linux, just a few additions uh, to, to the family of distribution supported by Zabbix. Obviously, Ubuntu, Debian, it's all supported. And also we support, uh, well, Raspberry Pi, if you prefer some low-cost uh, proxies deployed on a Raspberry Pi type of hardware. And we do provide the Docker images, extremely popular well, way of distributing and deploying Zabbix right now, again, with tens of millions down of downloads. Yeah? And uh, uh, Helm charts for, for, fast Kubernetes, for fast deployment of Zabbix in a Kubernetes environment and, uh, and OpenShift. But also, Zabbix is available in the cloud as one-click deployment, basically in all public clouds like uh, AWS, Azure, Google, uh, and Google Cloud. All right, so you may go to management console of AWS, click, click, and you have Zabbix up and running, pre-installed, pre-configured, and, and ready to use just in, in, one, in one minute. Um, again, with Zabbix, I believe we can monitor absolutely anything. Maybe not kind of 100% what we want. Obviously, there are some limitations, but most of the thing, we, most of the things we can think of, uh, they can be monitored by Zabbix in one way or another. And of course, so uh, and and let's remember those challenges, kind of CIO challenges. Like, okay, we have a mix of different technologies, older, newer ones. We have a cloud, and we have maybe some older legacy. Operate, uh, operating systems or different systems. So 
well, I think we, we, with, we, we, with Zabbix, you, you, can, you, can, you can do it both, so everything, yeah? So we do support legacy operating systems like uh, Solaris, AX, so I guess still we do support 264, yeah, Range PX, uh, but also we are prepared, well, for the, for the future, so we invest a lot into making sure that Zabbix fits well into, into, cloud, into cloud environment. Uh, yes, if you wonder, can Zabbix do A or can Zabbix monitor uh, application A or, or network device B? Uh, we have a special page which is called Zabbix.com such integrations. You, you go on our website uh, and go to the integration section of our website and you can see the hundreds and hundreds of a different ready to use a template for monitoring your specific application, services, network devices, and, uh, and uh, protocols. Yeah, so there are many. And some of them are created by our integration team. So those are official integrations delivered by us, by a vendor and our partners. Uh, and also there are high quality uh, contributions made by uh, Zabbix uh, community. And the number of integration is growing all, all the time. So for example, just recently we have added support for AWS, yeah, for AWS services, integration with the CloudWatch, uh, the monitoring of uh, services like EC2, like RDS, uh, uh, AWS DNS, uh, S3, and others. Also, we're investing a lot into making sure that uh, Azure and Google Cloud is, is covered. We have also introduced a high quality and very in-depth monitoring on VMware, it came with Zabbix 6.2 and it's been extended in Zabbix 6.4. So you have never, if you never used uh, Zabbix monitoring for, for VMware, just, well, have a look. Yeah, I think you'll be, you'll be surprised what we can do right now. But also, there are many, many more uh, distributions are coming, actually, uh, integrations are coming every day, like uh, Miraki, like uh, the Cockroach DB, the, uh, the Hewlett Packard, uh, well, the, the Synergy series of devices, and many, many others. It's all just a recent additions to the family of uh, kind of the out of the box uh, uh, integrations of uh, Zabbix. And of course, Zabbix can be easily integrated into your existing ecosystems of tools, like CMDB systems you already have in your companies, or ticketing systems, uh, well, I will just name a few, like, uh, well, ServiceNow, OTRS, uh, um, Atlassian family of uh, products like uh, Jira, and many others. And of course, alerting system and messaging systems like uh, Office 365, well, Slack, uh, and many, many, many others. Okay, so regardless of what systems you already use in your company, there is a great chance that it's already being covered by Zabbix. Well, security, I mentioned security, and security really plays an increasingly, increasingly important role, and we pay a huge attention to security in, in Zabbix. And there are actually a few levels. One, one level, obviously, is, is, is Zabbix infrastructure, the way how we develop Zabbix, the way how we secure our internal infrastructure, because this is kind of the, the, the first level. And maybe the second level is what kind of security related features we provide to our users, yeah, as, as in, in Zabbix product. So let's, let's have a look at some of them very quickly. Uh, first of all, Zabbix agents. That's Zabbix agents, that's what gets distributed across maybe different operating systems. And of course, we need to be kind of absolutely confident in the security of those agents because they're very close to a kind of sensitive systems. And Zabbix agent never required a root privileges or some super user privileges, yeah? It runs under normal user. And it's also possible to limit and to restrict what kind of uh, uh, metrics and items are available for each specific agent. So if I want uh, one agent to be able to monitor only one thing, something, well, maybe related to, to applications, to certain application, we can do it, we can do it very easily. What else? Well, all communications are secured, obviously, uh, in Zabbix, uh, and with agent we have PSK, uh, pre-shared key encryption, or TLS-based encryption. Uh, 
Uh, also, on the UI side of things, we also introduced a number of, uh, a number of features that really uh, improve the security of Zabbix with the support of uh, two-factor authentication with the single sign-on, uh, with the support of audit lock, with the password complexity check, which is really required for, to, uh, to follow some uh, strict security standards you may have in your company, and some other features are coming. We'll talk about this a little bit later. And uh, again, uh, you may keep in Zabbix, obviously, it's a monitoring tool, so sometimes we want to keep some sensitive information within Zabbix, like API tokens or some usernames or a password. But the good thing is that all sensitive information can be stored outside of Zabbix right now, okay? In vaults, yeah? In a, in, a, in a special type of software that is designed to keep your sensitive information. So now we support uh, HashiCorp vault and we also support uh, CyberArk vault. So two, uh, two, 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 two different solutions. Um, just recently, uh, we engaged in the HackerOne program so that in the bug bounty hacker one program uh, currently running in a private mode and it basically means that the best world's best uh, penetration testers are trying to hack into into zabbix into zabbix software yeah so that is that is really really cool so and other customers of HackerOne is a world famous companies like you know, Microsoft and Google and, uh, and many, many, many others all around the world. Right now, we are in the process of uh, the ISO 2701 accreditation. We already passed the pre audit check, and I believe that by the end uh, of this year, uh, it, 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 will, it will be achieved. Yeah, so ISO 2701 is, uh, is uh, we, we are getting it soon. What else? Uh, again, we are being very transparent about Zabbix and also about the security issues. Some time ago, we have introduced our uh, security advisor, which is publicly available on our website. So any security-related uh, issues and vulnerabilities which may or may not affect Zabbix are listed there. And sometimes we have some famous vulnerabilities found in, a, say, I don't know, Spring framework, I remember the famous vulnerability, so we can actually tell our users, no, Zabbix, uh, Zabbix Java Gateway is not affected. Yeah, but sometimes, of course, we found some Zabbix team or independent security researchers may found some problems that affect Zabbix software. And in this case, obviously, we report to our partners and our users first, and this is a good kind of advantage of being a Zabbix partner and Zabbix users. And then we, we, we distribute this information on our uh, Zabbix uh, security advisory page. What else? Um, so, in actually, traditionally, we've been working with the end users only, yeah? Kind of uh, someone wants a monitoring tool and we've been providing services to that company. But uh, at some point, it was time to rethink, okay, maybe Zabbix can be used for, for something else. And also, uh, right now, I think that Zabbix is a perfect solution. It's kind of awesome solution for, for uh, managed service providers. And what, what is the benefit of using Zabbix for managed service providers? There are, I think, two. One, obviously, using a monitoring and functionality provided by Zabbix, uh, MSP companies, they may increase the quality of services they deliver to, to their customers. This is number one. And the number two is that Zabbix monitoring solution uh, may provide an additional uh, revenue stream for MSPs types of companies. So this is kind of added value service you as an MSP company may provide to your end users. I, I think this is something to think about it if you're, if you're MSP type of company. Actually, there are a number of uh, kind of uh, features that really makes it, makes it uh, possible. I would like to mention just a few. First of all, it's, uh, it's uh, early problem detection. Thanks to the functionality provided by machine learning, by well, baseline monitoring, by anomaly detection, and also and trend prediction. 
I already mentioned that uh, reactive problem uh, resolution is no longer is no longer a solution. We we, we need to we need to uh, 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 we need to detect some potential problems as soon as soon as possible. So all these methods are super super important. What else? Uh, user roles. That is an excellent tool, uh, and that was, that was introduced, I guess, a couple of years ago, support of user roles. It really gives us a very fine-grained um, um, approach to, to the way how we manage user permissions. And if you want to uh, display uh, the monitoring information to our end users, if you're an MSP type of company or not MSP type of company, it doesn't matter, we can uh, actually tell, okay, Zabbix, please display dashboards only and in read-only mode and do not, do not tell about anything, uh, anything else. Okay, so the user roles are, are, is a really great feature which really helps to present Zabbix in a very kind of custom way. We don't want to give access to everything in Zabbix, but only to specific pages, maybe dashboards, list of problems, and maybe some reports, and maybe nothing else. Uh, the shadowed reports, okay, it's a very nice feature, and again, it's kind of a very nice functionality, which really helps to deliver uh, information from a monitoring tool to end users on, on a kind of and period, periodic basis. All right, I go, uh, I go to work uh, on Monday, and I'd like to see what's happened last week, okay? Or maybe I want to receive some kind of daily management reports. And it's actually an excellent way how to turn your dashboard into a PDF report. And so that PDF report can be delivered uh, on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly or early basis, or a basis to you. So this is a very nice, a very nice functionality. And the business service monitoring, that's something we introduced in Zabbix 6.0. This is ability to look at our infrastructure from a business point of view. So we are no longer interested in a lower level stuff like a CPU load or, well, available free disk space or availability or certain servers. Uh, no, we are mostly interested in our kind of service level objectives. We want to see if our business operates well or not. Yeah, so Zabbix is able to deliver real time uh, SLA, SLI, uh, information, it, it may send you alerts if something uh, happened, and it also provides a root cause analysis and also impact analysis. So again, if you, if you never used a business service monitoring, please, please have a look. It's, it's, it's a functionality that designed to scale to the huge number, more than 100 of thousand of a business, uh, of business services. You define a service tree and you know if something goes wrong. I think that's especially useful for, for managers. What else? And that's what I mentioned, the monitoring as a revenue stream for MSP type of companies. Again, we may provide a monitoring as an additional service to, to our users and generate an additional uh, revenue stream, stream thanks to functionality we, we, have, uh, we have in Zabbix. Um, okay, if you, if you want to see what are Zabbix capabilities in regards of data collection, alerting, or machine learning, or someone else, just uh, have a look at the features page at zabbix.com features, when you can find the, the basically the full list of the functionality uh, that, is provided, that is provided by Zabbix. And if you want to have some conversation with your colleagues, if Zabbix is a good tool or it's not maybe a good tool, just have a look at this page. And uh, there are so many to discover so what Zabbix can deliver, can deliver to you. Well, what's next? Yeah, so well, every time when we have a new major version ready, and it's always time for me and our, my, my team members to rethink, to rethink what, where we are, yeah? To understand where we are and what, what we are where we are moving to. What may be the next uh, features and new functionality we want to deliver to, to our users. 
And of course, it all comes, comes down to, to the roadmap. So what we include in our roadmap? Of course, we have a, a great choice of, I don't know, at this moment we have like 2,000, maybe even more of the big snacks features, the feature requests coming from our users. Obviously, we cannot implement everything in one go. We need to, we need to focus on something. And the roadmap is always uh, kind of uh, a difficult exercise for me and the for team members because we really need to, to set some, some priorities. And there are so many ways we may extend uh, Zabbix 2. And I would like to mention just a, a few vectors, just a few vectors uh, which we are moving right now, which we think are important for the future of Zabbix and for, for our customers. Of course, this is general usability, okay? We'd like to make Zabbix UI, uh, the user interface, uh, as easy as possible, all right? With a very, with a very, easy navigation uh, with, uh, with the views which are really tailored to your use cases with the great visualization. So that is, that is one of our uh, top priorities right now. Uh, the cloud, that's what we already started. Okay, we are, in, we are in the process of delivering kind of out of the box experience with Zabbix. You install Zabbix and all public clouds, all, pu all services of the public clouds are covered. So that's our goal and that's what our integration team is working on right now. Well, event processing. So Zabbix, I will, I will speak maybe about event processing a little bit later, but the main idea is to, to extend the way how we work with events and with ability to, well, to receive events from external system and turn Zabbix also into event management system. Uh, an extending scope of monitoring. We, again, we, as a Zabbix team, we're always thinking, okay, how to make Zabbix useful not only for infrastructure, uh, IT infrastructure monitoring, but for, for anything else. Zabbix is universal. It it's already can be used for different things, not necessarily related to IT infrastructure monitoring, environmental monitoring, IoT monitoring, it's all possible. But the things as uh, APM, application performance monitoring, or for example, uh, log management, they are not well covered right now. That's what we would like to think about in the future. And expandability on all levels. At this moment, we do provide many great features like a support of web hooks or user modules uh, or um, uh, ability to write your, well, scripts to, to add some URLs to Zabbix UIs and so on and so forth but it needs to be extended even further. Yeah, so with some, some plugins, uh, with the ability to, to make some modifications in Zabbix, without, in Zabbix with some modules, yeah, without making changes in Zabbix code itself. Yeah, so it needs to be customizable. Uh, and of course, a high availability, uh, load balancing and scalability, it's, it is important. It's still, it's still something we are very, very focused on right now. And I would like to give you some insights on the features we are currently working on and what will appear in the, in, in, in the near future in Zabbix. The first is advanced synthetic monitoring. So we already support the notion of synthetic monitoring in Zabbix. So you may basically script your checks using, using a JavaScript. Uh, and then, uh, and, but we are limited to HTTP protocol right now and we don't cover all scenarios. So uh, right now we are working on, uh, the, on the, the browser emulation, okay? So the, it would be possible basically to perform, if you're familiar with the products like a Gmeter or maybe a Selenium, uh, so it will be ability to emulate a user a user uh, experience, yeah, for end user monitoring. So we're acting as a browser. We just connect to web application. We do certain steps. We verify well performance availability of certain of uh, certain uh, objects in a, in HTML, for example. And uh, yeah, so we create a very complex scenario. This is coming, and I really hope that it's coming Zabbix 6.4 already. Uh, zero downtime upgrade of proxy. So right now, if you want to migrate uh, your Zabbix infrastructure from one major list to another, you don't need to touch your agents. So agents are backward compatible. Well, everything is fine. 
But what we need to do, we need to upgrade Zabbix server and proxies in one go. Yeah, sometimes it's not easy. If you don't have a configuration management system in place, well, it may take time. And it's, it, we need to really make it in one go. It, it complicates things. Uh, but uh, what we have in Zabbix 6.4 is that uh, the older proxies will continue to process data with the newer Zabbix server. All right, so it basically, what does it mean? You install a new Zabbix server and older proxies will continue to send and process data for a newer Zabbix server, which is really, really cool. It really gives us a much longer time frame and time window for the, for the upgrade. It can be extended to hours, to days, or maybe in some cases to, to weeks, so we can gradually upgrade all our proxies and it really gives us, well, zero downtime experience, which is, which is super, super nice. What else? Another thing which is coming and is being developed right now, it's a notion of the cause and symptom events. What does it mean? When we, when we go to the problem view, we see that, okay, this problem is basically a consequence on that problem, so why should we see it? We, we, we really want to see only root cause problems. Please don't show me something which is, uh, which is a not root cause. And that is exactly why we need this functionality. We basically split all problems into two ranks or two, two classes. One class is the root cause problems or a cause events, and another class is the symptom events. And if we know that, okay, so this problem is the symptom, okay, we can mark it as a symptom of the cause event and it will, it, and it will disappear from a problem view. So that is, that, is, that is very nice. And then, I don't know if it's visible or not, for example, uh, here, so this is, this is just a cause event, cause event, and we see, okay, this is a cause event, but this is a number of symptoms, the, 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 the number of related events. Okay, two, and we can expand it and see, okay, those are the symptoms. So this functionality is coming in a, in a Zabbix uh, 6.4 uh, very, uh, very soon. So at this moment, it would be possible to manage this relationship manually, but later on, it will be part of the event correlation model, so event correlation engine could, could do it uh, automatically um, based on the correlation rules. Yeah, and, and, and speaking about the event correlation, actually I've been talking about the event correlation for quite some time. Event correlation engine is kind of a work in progress. The design, the design of the event correlation engine is still work in progress, it's quite, uh, Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because really it's super, super important. Zabbix is known as a very well kind of done system which, is, which process metrics, metric data. Okay, we have been always thinking about, okay, metric, we transform metrics into, into, into events, but Zabbix is not able to, uh, to kind of to, to process a, a, a row events. Yeah, and the event correlation model will uh, will allow us to uh, basically to do th certain things. Uh, that's what is mentioned, like uh, the filtering, event filtering, deduplication, and enrichment. Those are kind of obvious thing. But I look at the event correlation as a, a platform which generates kind of a fact, a new fact out of existing facts. Because when we look at the problem view, it's basically the set of facts. System A is not available, what is it? It's a fact, yeah? We have another fact, yeah? An event correlation model needs to be smart enough to manage this kind of the, the set of facts, to, to maybe to hide something which is, not, which is less important and to generate a new fact based on, on the facts we already know. So that, that's, that's the idea and that is, that is uh, what, what is being discussed uh, within Zabbix team. Uh, we, we are working on, on the design right now. So uh, no promises about the, the time of delivery, but it's one of the, the, uh, the, the top uh, priorities uh, right now for us and for, my, for myself personally. I've been involved in this very much. Uh, Multi-data center monitoring. Uh, it's, it's about ability to receive events from external systems. Okay, once again, it's not about 
It's not about kind of receiving metrics from external systems, but events. So if we have uh, multiple Zabbix servers distributed across maybe different data centers, one data center, one uh, Zabbix server, another data center, another, data, uh, another Zabbix server, so they can push events into a central Zabbix server, like uh, uh, this one. Uh, and, uh, and, and here we basically see and, and, and get uh, this kind of single pane of glass experience for many Zabbix servers. Okay, so the dashboard, the dashboard could be generated based on data from a different Zabbix servers, and also central Zabbix server will be able to correlate events coming from, from, different, from different sources. Okay, so the first step is uh, to receive uh, events from Zabbix servers, and the next step will be to, to receive a gener ge generic events from other sources, maybe other monitoring tools or log files, or maybe traps, because SNMP trap is basically event, it's not a metric, it's, it's, a, it's a, a ready-made event. Yeah, and obviously the visualization capabilities, that uh, we have introduced a number of new widgets in Zabbix 6.2, uh, and of course, we'd like to ex extend it to a newer types of visualization, for example, aimed specifically to cloud monitoring, aimed specifically to, to monitoring of some dynamic environments like a Kubernetes cluster and the services, uh, and, and so on. So this is something that uh, we are very, very focused on right now. Uh, instant configuration upgrade, update. So what does it mean? So right now, uh, if you do some changes in, uh, in Zabbix, you create a new host, create new metrics, you create a new triggers, it takes time when this change gets distributed across your Zabbix uh, environment. Like, it takes time, uh, so the Zabbix server knows, okay, we have some configuration changes, then uh, this information needs to be pulled by proxy, then it needs to be pulled by the agent. But starting from Zabbix 6.4, and this functionality is already there, you can test it. We already have a beta of Zabbix 6.4 released. You can test it. As soon as you make a change in the Zabbix, just uh, very quickly, maybe five seconds, okay, very quickly, okay, it, it just it gets written to Zabbix database immediately, of course. And then uh, maybe within 30 seconds or five seconds, Zabbix server will discover, okay, we have a configuration change just kind of a delta, okay, we have a new item, for example. Uh, then maybe after 10 seconds, Zabbixer will push this information to proxy. Now we are using pool methods, we are pooling data, but, but starting from Zabbix 6.4, it will be pushed. Yeah, it will be pushed immediately by your Zabbix server to proxy, then from proxy to Zabbix agent, and after one minute max, you'll start receiving data and will start uh, um, getting notification about a different problem. So I'm very, very happy about this uh, functionality. We really made a lot. We changed our architecture a little bit internally, and it works for passive proxies, for active proxies, for passive agents, for active agents. So you're, you, again, you're 100% covered. JIT user provisioning. Yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah. So 6.4, 6.4. It's one of the top uh, feature requests. One, I think, number one on, or number two. So what's all about? It's about ability to manage users outside of Zabbix. Okay, so we have LDAP directory, uh, a, uh, AD, or maybe, well, SAML. Uh, and uh, you may keep Z Z uh, information about servers there. You don't need to manage it in Zabbix anymore. So as soon as Zabbix authenticates himself against LDAP, uh, Zabbix will basically map, uh, it will create a user in Zabbix automatically, it will map uh, SAML attributes to, to, to user groups, and everything, and everything will work kind of magically. Yeah, so this is a very, very nice feature. And, uh, and especially if you'd like to, comply, to, to be compliant to the highest security standards in your company or certain, uh, certain standards, uh, well, it's, it's a great feature. It's a great feature to have. Uh, it's already being developed, uh, and it will be delivered in Zabbix 6.4 uh, very soon. And this is Zabbix 7.0 roadmap in a nutshell. Uh, basically, cloud Kubernetes, it's still one of top priorities. JIT user provisioning, synthetic monitoring, Security compliance monitoring, that's something that may come later. 
okay? Uh, event correlation engine, uh, receiving events from outside, from third party systems, enterprise alarm console, framework for new widgets, simplified upgrade of proxies, and many other things. This is something we'd like to int introduce in Zabbix 7.0. As always, yeah, that's our intention. <laughs> it may or may not happen, yeah? Well, sometimes it takes longer time than we expect, but that's what we would like to see. And then later on, is, uh, we'd like to extend Zabbix more into, into open, tele open telemetry integration, observability stuff, cloud native, make it, make it cloud native. Uh, in terms of uh, scalability, load balancing, and high availability, and log management. So this is something on our radar, but a little bit later. And yes, if you'd like to learn more about the Zabbix roadmap, if you'd like to follow Zabbix development, you're very welcome to go to, to Zabbix roadmap, and all information is available there. From time to time, we are making some minor updates, but it's pretty up-to-date information with all those different statuses, like new in design and development ready. So if you see it's in dev, there is almost 100% chance it will be delivered in the next major release. All right? Okay, last but not least, and I think that's very important, I'd like to say, well, Zabbix community, we love you on behalf of all Zabbix team. Really. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, for, your, for your trust in Zabbix, for, for the way how you contribute, well, Zabbix translations, those are feature requests, of the voting, well, everything you do, some of the for, forum activities and a different chat, and well, you do, you do a lot and we, we see it. It get, it's really gets noticed by Zabbix team. Maybe we don't say it loudly often, yeah, but we do see it and we notice it. So thank you, thank you very much. Zabbix community, users, customers, and our partners for, 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 for everything you do, well, for Zabbix and for your use on Zabbix. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>